This video was sponsored by Elegoo. So I uploaded this video two weeks ago about the Vera Toolcheck Plus inspired EDC kit that I put together. It was kind of because I fell into this habit of watching EDC videos on YouTube, bought myself a bunch of new EDC tools and I wanted to combine them in a kit. At the end of that video though, we kind of came to the conclusion that it's a little bit too big because I put rotating bit storage in there, which looks really awesome from a design perspective, but it's not that functional from an actual usability perspective. Yeah, and this one, this video, we're going to be building a new Vera Toolcheck Plus inspired EDC and see if we can improve upon the design, make it a little bit smaller and incorporate even more tools than we had in the first one. So first do a little bit of a mini recap as to what we did in the prior project so that you are also up to date with it. Uh, the first one was the Vera 838 ratcheting screwdriver and the way we integrated it basically is 3D scanned it, made this little simple holder for it with a hole at the bottom. So the head kind of pops into that, has a magnet at the bottom and the edges are rounded over. All right, so the next one I bought was the Knipex 125mm version, which has been really useful for 3D print projects, just getting into like really small prints to hold a bolt, for example, or squeezing in magnets and that kind of stuff. It's been really useful for that as well. And the way I integrated this is 3D scanned it again, outlined it with the spline tool, and then created a holder where it just drops into place and is held in place with a magnet at the uh, front end of it. But I also tested like the bit storage situation, like what would be a nice angle for bits to fall into place. And I did this for a pride project where I found that a chamfer with a rando really helps it just drop in for most angles. And so that's kind of the methodology behind this entire project. It's not just about having easy access to the tools, but also how easy is it to put stuff back into its spot. So the next one was the Zippo Lighter. I mainly bought this one for like 3D print projects, you know, heating something up to squeeze it into a 3D print. The integration for it was really quite simple. At first I thought I'd make like a rectangle with a gap at the bottom over there so you can push in on it and it would flip outwards and you can grab it. Eventually that kind of downgraded into something way more simple with just like three magnets holding it in place. So I also implemented some tools that I already own, so a caliper, a twist champ and an HBM EC65 flashlight. The caliper, I just outlined it in the CAD software, created a drop-in placement. For the switch champ, I went for you know, a very unique side drop-in placement, which snaps into place with magnets as well. And for the ace-beam flashlight, I basically made it clip-on because it's not magnetic. So yeah, it clips onto the side with a little holder over there. But there was also some stuff that was just missing from this design, like a tape measure. I use that literally every single day. Uh, but yeah, I went to the shops, I bought myself a new tape measure kind of a, a medium size so you can get smaller ones as well i think this one's more useful for more scenarios it's like three meters long the integration is very similar to the first project so i engraved the date on there and that's just so that we know like when we bought it gives it a little bit more respect for your tools as well like i've had some tools for my great granddad with his initials engraved on there and also a date and then you know how old it is so you take more care of them for some reason so i took this one to the 3d scanning station as well uh, we don't need to scan this one for any reason at all but it's very useful, like I model on the iPad, and if I'm on a train, for example, I have a creative idea for a project I'd like to do, then I have all of those models in there, and I know all of the measurements, instead of going into a document and then finding the measurements there. Now, if you'd like access to the 3D scans, the models that I make, the designs that I make, then you can go over to my Patreon page. I upload pretty much everything I make over there, and you can also adjust them so that if you want to add a different tool, for example, you can do that, print it for yourself, and it really helps out the channel as well, so thank you for that. I also have this little mini ratchet that I want to implement into it. I really like how small it is, but I actually received it for free with a bed that I once ordered. So I don't think it's the most high quality mini ratchet, but it's been holding up quite nicely. And I took this one to the 3D scanner as well. I was quite surprised that I could do this because it's quite reflective at all the angles, but yeah, it did a pretty good job. For the integration, I basically outlined it, created a circle at the top because it kind of increases in width over there. And I made this one like with a push-in method, right? So you can push in at the bottom and it flips outwards and the magnets hold it in place at the top over there. I actually asked in the comment section of that video if anybody had like metal pencils that were magnetic that could clip onto it. And there were some suggestions, but most of these things are really overpriced, like 100 euros for uh, for example, a titanium one, and titanium isn't even magnetic, so that was kind of an issue. Eventually, I decided to just go with a normal pencil, and also want to put some earbuds in there, so I have these loop earbuds. Don't recommend you get these, they're very uncomfortable, but, you know, just earbuds in general are pretty useful to have if you can't find your headphones, and you need to protect your ears, then they're in there. So it actually took me quite a while to come up with a design that would actually fit on the bed size of the 3D printer that we'd be using, 
And that was also kind of a method, like, at, you know, limiting yourself in terms of what size you can print really helps in regards to making choices as to, you know, what tools are absolutely necessary on there and which ones can you kind of hide away in a less logical location, so to say. So Elugu sent over the Saturn IV Ultra 16K a very long time ago, actually. But this one actually has a heated vat, so it keeps the resin at a preset temperature, which is ideal for keeping the print's consistency higher. You can open a window and still be okay. They also put a little light above the camera. I would have put that light on the other side, on the opposite side of the camera, so you get a little more, bit more contrast in the image. I actually wanted to print this in a black resin before, but I didn't actually have enough of it, so I kind of mixed grey resin and black resin together. I thought it would result in like a really unique pattern or something, but because of the tilt release system of the vat itself, it just mixed it all together and turned it to a darker grey, which is also something really awesome about Elegoo resin printers. They have this uh, tilt release system, and somebody actually asked in the comment section, is your vat supposed to be moving like that? And that's actually the case. Yeah, this thing is supposed to be moving up and down so that it can release the uh, print, like the layer, and that way it goes a little bit more smoothly. In terms of print quality, it was really quite good. Uh, during this time lapse, you can see me refilling the vat sometimes because it didn't have enough resin in there to complete the entire print. And yeah, special thanks to Elegoo for supporting my channel. I left a link in the description down below, definitely check them out. Of course, the entire process of resin printing is a lot more involved. Like after you've printed it, you have to put it in a vat of IPO and then cure it in UV light. And you can get these UV curing stations from Elegoo as well. Most people wouldn't 3D print something like this in resin at all because it's quite brittle. If you drop it, then it most likely it will, it will snap. But for a solid brick like this, I think you can drop it quite a few times before that happens. And I was quite impressed by the quality of this thing as well. Like it feels very solid, that's more what I'm saying. So after I've taken off those support structures, I actually do put it in the UV curing station again because I'm, I'm quite afraid that there's still some resin on there which can burn your skin, for example. And for the most part, the entire putting it together process went pretty well until I actually tried to put the magnets in place for the caliper. Yeah, obviously something snapped off, which was kind of a shame. But I was thinking of putting a wooden backplate on this thing anyway, and I added some mounting points for that, so it wasn't that big of a deal. So that backplate actually has a gap in the middle as well, and that allows us to connect a arc Swiss plate, for example, which, you know, like accommodates the peak design capture clip, and then we can still use it in the original way that we had planned. In terms of this design, there's also a little drawer at the back end of it, which hides the pencil, and inside the drawer, then you could put your earbuds, for example. I was kind of hesitant about this because I don't, uh, I want everything to be quite easy access, right? Like, preferably one step, just grab it and you're done. Having that drawer there can be quite a hassle. So maybe that's something we can upgrade in a future variant because after laser cutting this sheet, I was thinking about this and it would be really cool if we made a, a completely wooden version of this as well. Maybe with some more, you know, with a hammer or something like a full-fledged toolkit. In the end, the entire toolkit came in a lot more compact than the first iteration, which is really quite nice, but we did have to sacrifice a little bit on bit storage. So, you know, maybe that's something we can work on because there's quite a lot of room still on the inside of this thing, where we could, for example, hide bits. The tape measure is also still accessible when it's in its spot, so if you quickly want to measure something up, you don't necessarily have to grab it. And the Swiss jump is held in place really quite nicely. It looks really sketchy when it's over there, but it's quite okay. Now, because I snapped off most of the holding points for the magnets for the caliper, the caliper is almost flying out over here. But I think if we were able to input all of those magnets, this one would be held in place a little bit more secure. And you can actually push on the caliper from that end as well to take that out a little bit easier. The little drawer is a little bit, you know, it's quite difficult to get out. So that's why I want the pencil to be more accessible in a future iteration. But as it sounds right now, it's a very comprehensive little toolkit for most scenarios. And yeah, we can make an ultra, ultra version of this with like even more bit storage and that kind of stuff. But then we'll go back to the prior problem, which was size and that kind of stuff. So let's see where we end up with this one.
So if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the 3D printed EDC tool video I uploaded about three months ago. Definitely check it out and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.